This NZX TH9 Flow sells for £170, including VAT, here in the UK. If you prefer, there's an Elite version that's £260, which has a glass top panel and the three fans at the front suddenly become RGB. And now I think about it, that sounds like quite a lot. So how can I soften the blow? According to my notes, this case is 67 litres in volume. As you can see, it's a large dual chamber design. If we do some maths, that works out to £2.53 a litre. So it's official. The NZX TH9 Flow is cheaper than beer. Let's pull off some panels and take a closer look at the H9 Flow. Starting with the obvious question, as we have glass on the front and glass on the side, how can it be called Flow? We do indeed have the capability of flowing air in the floor of the case, clearly the top is mesh, also filtered. But glass does not flow air. Turning to the right hand side, we have a heavily perforated panel. And I'm quite sure this is the largest filter I've ever seen in a PC case. And here we have it, three side mounted 120mm fans. Which is why in the main compartment, we're looking at the back of those fans. Sadly for us, all four fans, three in the side, one at the rear, are voltage controlled rather than PWM. And we can swing this cover, which is retained by magnets. And now we have access to where the cables will go. This cover doubles up not only as a cable management plate, but also can accommodate SSDs. As you can see by the mounting holes, you slide them in, screw them in place. And we also have a drive cage for two three and a half inch hard drives. The power supply goes in this upper position, so it sits on this platform. The front IO is on the top of the case, power button, two USB-A's, one Type-C audio headset jack. Installation of cooling, we have a radiator rack at the side, two thumb screws at the top, thumb screw at the bottom, and away it comes. As you can see, we have plenty of space to install a radiator or an AIO, so you can install the entire assembly in the rack and then put it in place. It's a similar story in the roof, radiator rack, two thumb screws, and out it comes. Slightly flimsy, but once it's locked down, should be fine. We have a radiator fan rack in the side, and one in the roof. For some reason, NZXT does not extend the same courtesy to the floor. You have to install the cooling and screw it down in situ. To get to specifics, the four fans included with this case are Q120s, but are described as case versions. Maximum speed 1200 RPM. They are not RGB. The bearing looks like it's a rifle bearing and they are voltage controlled rather than PWM. You can install three 120mm fans or a 360 radiator in the side position, three 120s or a 360 in the roof, or two 140s or a 280mm radiator. You can install the same cooling in the floor as in the roof, and you can install a 120 fan in the rear. You don't get an optical drive bay. In terms of storage, we have two combo bays that can accommodate a three and a half or two and a half inch drive, and four Four SSD bays. It would appear the NZXT H9 Flow covers all the basics. It's nice and sturdy, it looks attractive enough, and you can install plenty of hardware in this large chamber. So probably the best bet is to get out some hardware and get busy building a PC.
We'll start with the motherboard assembly. This NZXT N7Z790, so Z790 chipset supports Intel 13th Gen Raptor Lake. The board itself, as far as I'm aware, NZXT is still partnered with ASRock. Looks to me like a reworked Steel Legend. NZXT charges £300 for this board. A Steel Legend's 270 so the premium is trivial. And we have neat little features like magnetically retained SSD covers. Once you pull off the covers, you can see underneath the PCB looks quite conventional. Insert a Sabrent Rocket 4.0 SSD. And the cosmetic cover simply snaps into place. We've got ventilated shrouding over the VRMs. The rear I.O. has a reasonable amount of expansion, a decent amount of USB. We've also got Ethernet, Wi-Fi and full surround sound audio. Around this side of the board we have laid down USB 3.1 and also laid down SATA and a decent array of headers and connectors across the foot of the board. We're going to need a few of those to connect up the four case fans. Processor is already installed, Intel Core i7-13700K. And I've chosen this Thermaltake Tough RAM XG RGB D5 memory rated at 6,000 mega transfers. I've chosen this Thermaltake memory because the speed is good and aesthetically it looks like a really good match for the NZXT motherboard. That's the motherboard installed and it's looking good. Next up, the power supply. NZXT C1200 gold rated. What's this? To prevent damage, do not connect cables from other power supplies, including previous C-series gold models. That sounds like good advice to me, and I shall heed that good advice. Fully modular. And loads of cables included, including 12 volt high power. And I'll say this, the NZXT branding with their purple and white combo, that is completely on point. Power supply needs to intake air through the ventilator side panel. So it sits like that. and locked in place. The next step is to install the CPU cooler. I've chosen this NZXT Kraken Elite 360 RGB, which sells for a slightly steep 270 pounds. However, I've had to make a small step backwards because when I installed the 200 pounds power supply, I forgot it's in the upper position and therefore it overshadows the back of the CPU socket. So I had to slip the power supply out of place so I could install the mounts for the CPU cooler. But they are now in place. The CPU cooler is installed in the top radiator rack along with a tangle of cables because each of the three 120mm fans has a PWM connection and also a proprietary RGB connection. So six cables for the three fans. I can feed these cables through this enormous opening for that very purpose. Lower the assembly. It's sitting slightly on the EPS cable. I'm slightly surprised the H9 flow is tight for space around the EPS connections. That's a traditional problem for smaller cases. This is a big case, but it's wide. It's not especially tall. So I'll hook up the connections and then it's going to be time for the graphics card. But before I get to that graphics card, observe the cabling for the Kraken Elite 360 RGB has just vanished. Partly that's down to the cable management system inside the H9 flow. Partly it's because there's so much space, the cabling almost evaporates. And on the subject of the significant amount of space inside the case, 
just look at this Gigabyte GeForce RTX 4080 Gaming OC, which is a huge graphics card. And you will observe this huge graphics card slips inside the H9 flow without any difficulty. Loads of space all around. I do want to check out how much clearance we have between the 12 volt high power connector and the side glass. I, it continues to surprise me. This is a case with a very large footprint. It is wide. If you're buying a case like this, an RTX 4080, 4090 is a very probable graphics card choice. And here we are with the cable connection up against the glass. With our PC up and running, we had a look inside the NZXT BIOS, selected the type of cooler we had installed, set XMP, and had a quick look at the fan settings. After that, we reacquainted ourselves with NZXT's CAM software. For some reason, it operates inside a very small window and you can't expand the window or go full screen. And then it was time for some testing. In the first test, we set the fans at 50%. So the case fans are running at 800 RPM and the fans on the AIO cooler at 1000 RPM. And it sounded like this. Then we ramped the fans to 100%. The case fans now running at 1350 RPM and the AIO fans at 1800 RPM. And it sounded like this. The BIOS had decided to power our Core i7 with 229 watts. And as a result, temperatures on a toasty 26 Celsius ambient day weren't too impressive. With the cooling ramped up, the CPU is operating at 95 degrees but with the cooling turned down 100 degrees. GPU temperature was much more reasonable. We can agree the NZXT H9 Flow looks very appealing in this configuration, but might it look better if we were to add 100 pounds of RGB fans in the side and the rear, along with the 25 pound RGB fan controller, and how's about a 75 pound vertical GPU mount with PCI Express riser? Would that improve the NZXT H9 flow? Out with the fan rack and the original case fans, swap over to the RGB fans, then the graphics card goes into the vertical GPU mount and the entire assembly goes into the case. On with the main glass and we can turn on the PC and enjoy the RGB light show. We can officially state the NZXT H9 Flow does indeed look better with loads of RGB and a vertical GPU. So the next question is, how does it perform? Again, two test scenarios. The first with the fans at 50%, which means they're all running at 1000 RPM. And that sounded like this. The CPU temperature is 100 degrees at an ambient of 26 and the GPU 69 degrees. Then we ramped the fans to full speed, which means they're all running at 1800 RPM and it sounded like this. CPU temperature now 95 degrees and the GPU 68. Putting all those figures into one chart shows that actually the RGB fans don't really help the case to breathe particularly well and the vertical GPU doesn't perform any better than the horizontal GPU. And we reached the conclusion of my review of this NZXT H9 flow. Pros and cons, pros the good points, loads of mesh panels that promise good airflow. This case does indeed flow air quite well. However, it's a 700 watt under load PC build and the Core i7 is being pummeled by the power delivery of the motherboard and the result is it runs hot. However, getting it to run cooler involves lots of noise. The second pro is smart styling with glass on the front and on the side. I've removed this panel just to avoid a bit of reflection. I like it, the clear glass shows you what's going on inside your PC. You've got good support for fans and liquid coolers. I was toying with the idea of adding yet more fans in the floor of the case. There's obviously plenty of space for that. And as you know, I've taken out four of the case fans already, so I could have put some of them down the bottom. The cable clutter can be easily hidden away. There's loads of space around the back and it's a solid panel, albeit mesh. So hiding away cable mess, simple. 
Cons, the negative points. It's a dual chamber case with a very large footprint and it requires plenty of space. The four F series fans supplied with this case are rather basic. They are DC controlled rather than PWM. And finally, you have a radiator fan rack in the roof of the case and one in the side. But for some reason, you don't get one in the floor of the case. So if you wish to install cooling in the floor of the case, it's gonna be slightly more work than it needs to be. Overall, I like the NZXTH9 Flow. It's a good case, but it's not a great case. And as a consequence, I'm giving it a worth considering award.